three pieces of AI news to get your week started. Number one comes from the world of LLM driven coding. We have now seen enough development in this space that I think we can reliably classify the LLM driven coding applications into two categories. Category one is for people who are just getting started in coding and who probably are depending on the LLM to help them figure out what to do next. Bolt fits in there, uh, Lovable fits in there, Replit fits in there. These are all browser-based applications. Number two is an actual development environment that you download and install on your local machine and use an LLM inside the development environment in order to help you code faster. And that's for people generally who know a little bit more about coding. Cursor is a great example there. Another great example is Windsurf. And that's my piece of news. So Windsurf fundamentally has shifted the stakes for LLM driven coding by making it more agentified. They call this cascade. I played with it just yesterday and I'm able to put up a reasonable looking landing page in 10 minutes. And part of how it does that is by being more proactive than most LLM driven coding applications have been. But that's not it. That brings me to my second piece of news. So Cursor is worried about the market share and the chatter that Windsurf has been able to garner in the last couple of weeks. And they were clearly worried enough about it that I think they rushed their release of their new agents. And so Cursor now has an agent based flow that people are comparing to like a software intern where you can just tell it to do something and you can go off and you can enjoy a movie and come back and see what Cursor has built. To me, like looking at it, it looks a lot like Cursor shipped something very quickly in order to stop the chatter around Windsurf. And this continues to underline the arms race dynamics amongst key players in the LLM ecosystem. So for large language models, if you don't have attention, you don't have anything. You don't have oxygen. You don't have momentum. You don't have a chance to raise. And so when you get into a position where you are neck and neck with another player and that player makes a strategic move, you have got to make that same move relatively quickly or you lose perceived momentum. And that can in turn translate into lost users, lost revenue, et cetera. And so when Windsurf shipped, Cursor was put in a position where they had to ship agents very quickly in order to catch up. Now, I will tell you, to be honest, I've played with both, both Windsurf and Cursor, and I still think Windsurf is sort of the best environment out there for right now. I feel like it's the most flexible, it's the most proactive, it's the most thoughtful, and I, and I know that's an odd thing to say about an LLM, but it does give me the impression that it's really being thoughtful across the code base, and that's something that others have noticed as well. Okay. So those are the first two pieces of news. Windsurf dropping, which I know is not like super recent, but I wanted to contextualize it within the sort of larger arms race. And then Cursor shipping agents, which did happen very recently. It was just over the weekend. Okay, third piece of news is AWS funding Anthropic for $4 billion. Now the money itself is not such a big deal. Certainly OpenAI has raked in vast amounts, and this is just a drop in the bucket by comparison. What's interesting from a strategic perspective is that this ties Anthropic more deeply into Amazon's larger strategic agenda. And it also gives us a chance to look at the partners that they are serving with this new AWS Anthropic collaboration. So we get some names. All right. First, from the chips up, fundamentally, Amazon is not happy with the amount of money they are shoveling to Jensen Huang and NVIDIA right now. And they have to in order to run their large language model driven cloud services. So AWS Bedrock, for example, they would like it to be not on NVIDIA chips. And right now they are too dependent. So they have spun up a project called Annapurna, which is designed to give them new chips. It's the uh, Trainium initiative, I believe, where it's focused really on sort of chips that enable you to train LLMs efficiently. And critically, part of the deal with Anthropic is Anthropic working with the Annapurna team on the Trainium chips so that the Trainium chips become the preferred way to train Claude models. That was part of the, the deal that was struck. 
And when you think about it, that is a pretty significant commitment on Anthropic's part, because it means that if NVIDIA were to make a really significant innovation in chip production, which historically they have, well, Anthropic might have less flexibility than OpenAI and Google to take advantage of that. They're sort of locked in. Now, the exact terms haven't been disclosed, but they seem to be de facto locked in to the AWS plans to displace NVIDIA's chips. And that's a fairly big bet for Anthropic to make. At the same time, I think AWS has more flexibility. Yes, Anthropic is the preferred partner. I'm sure there's paper to that effect. But Amazon is just so much bigger than Anthropic that if they needed to shift to having a different preferred partner, because OpenAI hit artificial general intelligence first, there will be a way for them to get out of that paper and do that. So I think that Amazon retains more strategic flexibility than Anthropic in this relationship. But Anthropic had limited options to raise after OpenAI sucked a lot of the oxygen out. I don't know if you noticed, but at the end of the day, after the OpenAI raise that was huge a couple of months back, nobody's really raised in the major model maker space. And so Anthropic actually getting enough dollars on the table to keep rolling and keep training and getting a strategic partner for training. There's probably credits for training and other kinds of things that are off the table in terms of cash. They needed it. They had to take the deal. So that's my analysis of the AWS uh, Anthropic deal. I think it's an important one. I think it's something that's going to keep Claude in a position to continue competing with OpenAI, which is good for the industry and good for all of us. And I think finally, it's interesting to see how far they've been able to come. So we actually got to see some of their partners and that was in the press release because it often is. Uh, and it's really interesting. They talked about partnering with Intuit. They talked about partnering with uh, Pfizer on drugs, which I don't know what it is, but like every single model maker is really into bragging about their partnerships with Big Pharma. And then finally, they talked about the European Parliament, which I thought was really interesting, because if you're working with a European Parliament, it means you see a pathway to having your models be compliant and first class citizens in the EU, which would be a big get, because I know that the EU has been somewhat more cautious about how to greenlight these models versus the US. There you go. Those are the three big pieces of news. We had the whole cursor windsurf dynamic. We have the strategic analysis of AWS and of Anthropic. And of course, Cursor dropping that agent just to try and get a leg up on Windsurf. You tell me, do you think Windsurf is better or do you think Cursor is better? Cheers.